This video is actually a response to a previous video I did, uh, 139, which was on looking up a day for a date. And it used uh, two uh, arrays of structs. And someone left a comment of, why don't you just use a dictionary? And a dictionary actually would make for much more simple code. Although benchmarks indicate that a dictionary might actually run a little slower because a dictionary class has a lot of overhead. But a lot of you might be asking, what the heck is a dictionary anyhow? <coughs> and a dictionary is one of those strange classes that has the angle bracket after the class name. And the angle brackets contain a type in every case, like list is another one that has an angle bracket and a type. And in case of dictionary, there's actually two types. In the case of list, there's only one type. And for dictionary, the first type is the key type, and the second type is the value type. And I have an example of defining a dictionary, in this case named ages. And it has a first type of a string, which is the key, and a second type of an int, which is the value. And then, like any class, we instantiate it by saying equal new, and you need to specify the type after the new, too, the types. And then I use an initializer list in this case. So we have the first key is Sophia, and the first age is uh, 32. The f second name is Obi, and the second age is 11, and so on. And one of the good things about dictionaries is they're dynamically updatable, once again, like a list. So we could define it as, uh, say, string string, and have a name of jobs for the object, and then have new dictionary string string parent parent, which of course is a call to the constructor. And then we can have dictionary.add if we want to add items at any time in the code. So we can have dictionary add Sophia librarian, dictionary add OB real estate agent, and so on. And have a lookup of jobs in effect. And there's a lot of different uh, properties and uh, methods associated with dictionary. So you can do a lot of things. For instance, you can have an if and say jobs contains key Fred, which would return false in the case of this because we don't have Fred as a key in here. And generally speaking, the way you look things up is you treat the dictionary like an associative array. So you'd say ages and then the key name, and that will return the value. So in this case, we have int Sophia age equals ages Sophia, and that would look up Sophia in the dictionary and return a 32. So if we look at the rewrite of the uh, returning a day for a date code, I essentially had two uh, arrays of structures and I replaced these with two dictionaries. So we have uh, dictionary string string D2R, which stands for date to rhyme. and that's instantiated in the usual way. And then the initializer list has Monday and Monday's child is fair of face. So Monday is the key and Monday's child is fair of face is the value. And Tuesday, Tuesday's child is full of grace and so on. And then the second uh, dictionary is also the same way. It's uh, two strings and this is S to D which is star to date. Uh, which is, in this case, the date is their birth date. And we have Katie Holmes, uh, 12, 18, 1978, and so on. And if you look at the form, this is a list of the stars that are in that uh, second dictionary, which is the key, the, the star names is the key in the case of that dictionary. And then this was the birth date. So basically, if we click on a star, we want to look up their birth date and put it in this field of date. So if we look at uh, the code for selected index changed, which is the event that gets fired when you click on a different item in the list, we have the uh, S to D dictionary. 
and then referenced as the key in that dictionary, we have the list box selected item to string. So basically that'll take the name from the list box and look it up in the S to D dictionary and put it in the text field we were looking at. And then of course to populate this list box we use the form load because we want that to happen right away. So you see in the form load we could call populate star to date list box which is an identical function to it, what was in the original code but in using dictionaries now instead of uh, of uh, arrays of structs and I use a list of strings called stars and this list is populated by a collection which is a property inside the dictionary called keys there's also a property called values if you just want to get a list of all the values so this will basically take all the keys from the star to date dictionary and put them in this uh, variable or list array. A list is the equivalent of array except it's dynamic. And it has the stars populated so I can go in a for each and do string star in stars and it'll read each of the stars in this list one after another and then do a list box dot items add to add this to the list box. And then the final functionality is the button, which we see is uh, uh, gets the value from the date text box, and then does a date time parse to translate it into a date time structure. And then when we have the date time structure, we can get the day of the week by using that property. So we can have string str day the date time structure day of week to string and that'll get the date and then we can use this date as an input to the date to rhyme to look up the rhyme once again from the second dictionary and put that in the rhyme text so you'll notice when we do the selected index change of the star it puts this in the text box and then just calls this button click like a function so in effect we're causing the code to automatically click that button and the input of that button is this text box so in a strange way this is like a parameter to this function but it's really using the interface rather than actual parameters so if we compile this code and run it we see the uh, list of stars that are all the keys from the star to uh, date dictionary and if I click on one of them we get the date put in the date box and this automatically clicks the get day button so we see Monday and Monday's child is fair of face if we click on Michelle Pfeiffer we get Tuesday Tuesday's child is full of grace and we can put some arbitrary date in here too we don't have to get it from the list box so I can say like 429 uh, 23,009 and get the day for that which turns out to be a Thursday probably take their word for it well I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and learned a lot and there's a lot more to learn about dictionaries so if you really want to get into dictionaries I'd look them up online you know Google them and look at the Microsoft write-ups on them and so on but I'd appreciate you if you'd subscribe and I'll get back to the regular numbered videos instead of this response video to a previous video in the next video. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.